All right, good afternoon. May God bless you wherever is it that you are. My name is Pastor Naum Mendez and join, joining me today is Pastor Ansel Brown. Pastor, how are you doing this evening? I am doing well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back after a week of absence. We were, last week we looked at um, a study about health and how we can be healthy physically and spiritually. And today we have a new topic. So I'm glad to be with you this evening. Yes, yes. So by God's grace, we'll continue to come to you week after week. And if yes. you take, check our previous our previous uh, uh, videos, make sure that you go there into our Facebook page, into our video section. They're entitled Lifting Up Jesus. We have been covering 20, 22, 23 studies so far. Yes, and by God's have. grace, we will continue to finish the 30 studies that we have. So at this time, before we begin, I would like to ask each of you, if you could please join us for a word of prayer as we open tonight's topic, Christian Standards of Living. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this blessed assurance that you give us, that Jesus is able to save. And Lord, as we are going to be digging into the topic of Christian standard of living, allow us to know that it's not a jail, allow us to know that is not uh, something that is binding, but Lord, allow us to know that through your love and through your word, we are able to have a better life and a life that has more abundance. So please, Lord, bless us as we now dive into tonight's topic and that, Lord, that everything that we may be said here may be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, Pastor, the Christian standard of living, you know, I remember... And I've told this story before in church, but I remember one night I went out. Do you remember my cousin, the one that plays guitar? Yes. Yeah. So I went out with my cousin and uh, I remember that I was a, that he likes this restaurant by the name of CeCe's. You know, it's unlimited. Uh, it's fun. It's nice. And you get to eat as much as you like. And I remember that we go to CeCe's and we sit at this table. And he starts, uh, he, he starts eating, and we start eating, and we start chatting. And this family goes and sits on a table across to us. It was about 7.30. You know, it was after, uh, after the evening church service. And we were eating, and we were talking. And I noticed, and I looked at the people that were next to me. I didn't recognize them. I didn't see them uh, very clearly. But I saw the shoes that the father of the of the family was wearing you know they were not tennis shoes they were not casual shoes but they were black dressing shoes and they were very good uh, uh very well clean I realized you know i think they might be from church i started looking at them and they had salads they didn't have any 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 uh any, uh, uh, um, you know, last week we talked about the, the, the unclean food. meats. Yes, they had quality meats, you know, or, or cheese in their in their pizza. And then I, I I told my cousin, you know what? I think they're people from church. I think they're Adventists. Look at the shoes, man. I told him. I always that line always rings in my head. Look at the shoes. <laughs> After much uh, much uh, uh, talking between my cousin and I. I went on and I let, I looked at them and I said to the father, are you guys Adventists? And he said, well, yes, we are. And he was very happy. And I told him who I was. We told him where we came from. And I told him the story. We've been talking for the past 20 minutes that you might or not be Adventist because of the shoes that you're wearing. Pastor, what is this Christian standard of living? Is it possible to recognize someone by their behaviors and by the way that they do stuff? Well, the thing is, once we come to Christ, we will not stay the same. In the mm -hmm. book of John, chapter 4, he said, we must be born again. Not only be born of water, but by the Spirit. And if we are led by the Spirit, if we are born again, we have died to the old man and we are risen new in Christ, then something has to change. We can't stay the way we were. And so that is where the difference comes. When we give our lives to Christ, something changes. And 
it will be evident to everyone around who knew us before. Our patterns will be different, our speech will be different, our lifestyle will be different. And so there has to be some change. And that change is not just coming from you, but it is Holy Spirit working through you that will effect that change. Man. So, you know, Pastor, it, I, I love the I love the way the, the lesson of today introduces it, you know, ambassadors for Christ. Mm. Ambassadors for Christ. And it's, it's interesting because all the people that profess to have Jesus have to be their ambassadors, meaning they have to show, meaning they have to be a living proof. You know, if I am an ambassador for a certain country, I am expected to speak the language of the country. I am expected to know the culture of the country. And I am expected to know what I can do and can't do. Yeah. So if I am an, an ambassador for Christ, I can speak. I have to show. And I have to know. So, and Pastor, you, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you have to live always in favor of who yeah. you are presenting. So, Pastor, you know, the believers in Rome were having this issue. And they heard the term ambassadors of Christ. But Paul uh -huh. told something very interesting. What did he tell them? Let's look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. That means do not be like the world. Do not shape your life like the world. But be transformed. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. So there has to take place some renewing in the mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So God wants us to renew our mind so that uh, we can show the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Jesus, when he uh, gave his disciples the Lord's prayer, he said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is perfectly followed in heaven. And he wants it to be perfectly followed in our lives when we give our lives to him. And so to prove and the good and acceptable perf and perfect will of God means that my life should be in accordance with his will when I'm exposed to him. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the interesting things about God is that he has a very big character. Mm -hmm. The majority of the character is love. You know, and he loves us, and he loves us so much that he wants us to be with him. Yet there are many things who want to prevent us from being with Christ. The next, you know, and 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 John talks about this in First John chapter two, verse fifteen. What can prevent us about being with Christ? And uh, this is now once again First John chapter one, no, chapter two, verse fifteen. The Bible says. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Pastor, how could it be that I get to lose the love of the Father? <laughs> because if I lose the love of the Father, it means I'm now focusing on other things. Uh, thou shalt put no, have no other gods before me. When we put the world and the things of the world before God, then we elevate them above God. And so God is now secondary. But God wants to be primary in our lives. He want to be, wants to be sovereign in our lives. And so nothing should get in the way between us and God. Amen. Pastor, unfortunately, as we said, we live in this world that bombards us with many, many, many things, you know. We have right now, at least here in our area, we're bombarded with health, we're bombarded with economy, we're involved with politics, and I'm pretty sure that all of the world has, you know, their own involvements. Yet also there is some sort of pleasure that also prevents us from going into, into a better communion with God. And it's not necessarily a pleasure that is benefiting to us. What are the that are harmful against us that we could get some quote unquote pleasure out of. And as we looked at it, so we should not love the things of the world. And mm -hmm. so what are the things of the world that we should not love? First John 2, verse 16, the next verse in that same passage. 
for all that is in the world. So he said, don't love the world. So what is in the world? He said, all that is in the world, uh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. So the things that the body, the flesh yearns for, the things that we see and we want that we shouldn't want, and the pride of life, we feel satisfied with what we have, look at what I've accomplished, is not of the Father. So when we love the world, when we love the, the, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life, those things are not of the Father, but those things are of the world. And so if we truly want to be ambassadors of Christ, we will put these things as secondary and put Christ as primary. Definitely. You know, I, I remember the first time I heard uh, the term, and I heard it in Spanish, you know, mundano. And that translates to worldliness. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you know, worldliness basically means you wanting the things of the world above God. And the things of the world are not necessarily, you know, we try to trick ourselves. We try to trick ourselves. Oh, I mean, you know, but food is of the world. What if I get hungry, you know? Or, or we try to say, you know, but my family is of this world. What if I love my family, you know? What would you say to these people, Pastor? And I know this one's not there, but what would you say to these people that try to get smart on putting worldliness on that level? Yeah, we have to be smart about it. We're going to compare uh, our motivation with God's word. And so uh, food, we all need to, to eat food, but we have to be uh, temperate in all things. We can't mm -hmm. overeat. <laughs> so food is yes. good, but we don't overeat. Because yeah. we have a lot of people who just can't stop eating. You know, I, I've heard of situations where people go to the restaurant, they eat, 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 then they go to the bathroom and bring it up and then go back to eat. Mm. You know, so so we have to be smart about this and follow the word of God. The word of God gives us some guidance as to how we should appreciate the things of the world. We don't want the, world, the things of the world for ourselves, but we are motivated to get things in the world so that we can be a blessing to others. So yes. it is... The, the what motivates us to 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 gain things or yes. not to gain things if we are led by the spirit then the motivation should be the spirit of god guiding our hearts as we, our minds are transformed not for our selfish motive but to promulgate the, the, the gospel of jesus christ amen you know what motivates us to be and to go forward yes you know? That is, that is always the thing. Now, Pastor, just talked about this term, worldliness. Is it something that is found only in non-believers? Well, I would venture to say no, but let us look at the answer that is given in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3. Let's see what the Bible tells us there. All right. Um, uh, the three are there on the screen, and I will read them. The Bible reads. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal, and there is among you envy and strife and division, and you are not carnal and walk as men as men so we see here that even in the church we see some worldly attitudes in the church and what we have to recognize too you know pastor is that the church is like a hospital yes. we are all sick from sin and we come to Christ as we are. That's how he tells us to come. He doesn't say, okay, pastor, you wait until you're healthy and then you come. No, he tells us to come as we are. If we're broken hearted, we can come. If we're lame, we can come. If we're blind or deaf or mute, we can come as we are. And then he will heal us. Then he will motivate us to righteousness. So when we come into the church, we still have some some degree of deformity and that God in his wisdom 
will mold us and make us into what he wants us to be. So even with the people of God, we see those things and we pray that God will take them away eventually. Amen. You know, Pastor, now knowing that people from outside of the church and even people inside of the church can have it, mm -hmm. how do you know if I've been having a sinful nature or I've been having this priorities of the world? How can I know that? Well, let's look at uh, Galatians 5, 19 to 21, because the Bible does make it very clear uh, the distinction between those who walk after the flesh versus those who walk after the, fifth, the spirit, those who are carnal versus those who are not. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. So the, here the works of the flesh are those that are carnal, those that are not spiritual. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. So those who are committing adultery, those who are committing fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul here has put out a list of things that are after the flesh. I see something, the flesh yearns for it, and I do it. And Paul says, those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so God has given us clear instructions as to how we should live, the things that we should do and the things that we should not do. If we are led by the spirit, we will not do those things. If we are led by the flesh, then we will end up doing those things. Yes, you know, one of the things that we need to understand as we are getting to this is that Paul lists all of these uh, um, no, I don't want to say sins, but behavior mm -hmm. uh, lists all of these behaviors so that we know and we are very awake. You know, some of these verses can actually be a wake up slap for some people because mm -hmm. they have been doing this and professing that they are Christians. And this just comes and, and drives the nail more home into saying those people whether you are in church or outside of the church and you choosing that behavior over Christ, you will not go into heaven. So, yes, and, and you know, the, uh, Paul was not speaking to the world when he wrote to the Galatians. He uh, was writing to the Galatian church. Yes. <laughs> he was writing to people who should have known better because Paul was telling them that they should have grown better than that. They should have grown in grace, in the grace of God, in that process of sanctification where we grow up in Christ. Because when we come to Christ, the Bible tells us that we are justified. We say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. He forgives me of my sins and looks on me as if I'd never sinned. But now I need to grow in grace, grow in Christ. And that is a process of sanctification. And so as we grow in grace, our attitudes, our actions should reflect more and more and more the actions and attitudes of Christ. And so Definitely. if that is not happening, something is wrong. We need to reevaluate where we are and cry out to God and ask him to motivate us for righteousness. Now, Pastor, as we have been covering uh, so far, we know that there is something called worldliness, which is choosing the world over God. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if I was a newborn, uh, a new a new Christian, you know? I, I'm a baby Christian. I was just accepted Christ. How can I develop myself? Because it's very easy, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. if, I, if you raise a child teaching them how to steal candy from uh, Walmart or from HEB, they're going to grow up thinking that that is normal, you know? That's right. And going to eventually uh, continue doing that until they are mature, thinking that that is the way to be. So 
if I am a baby Christian, if I am a, 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 just a, a little Christian who is growing up, how can I take care of my raising? How can, you know, how can I help my own education and my own lifestyle and to guide me into a better maturity as a Christian? Yeah, how do you grow into a mature man and woman of God? And uh, the passage in Galatians that we just read is a precursor to uh, verses. Well, this, what we're going to read now is a precursor to those mm -hmm. verses. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 to 18. Uh, it gives us an indication of how we can mature in Christ. The Bible says, this I say then, walk in the spirit. In the spirit, yes. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would but if you be led by the spirit you are not under the law yeah, and that's why uh, jesus said we must in john chapter 4 we must be born again born of two things Born of the water and the of spirit. the spirit. Born of the water and of the spirit. And so this being born of the spirit is God giving us an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so now that we are, we are now exposed to this Holy Spirit, the flesh is still there because we are born in sin and shape and iniquity. We have a, a, a fleshly lust, but now the spirit is there. And now there is this war between the flesh and the spirit. And the one that we feed the most, we studied this in the past, the one that we feed the most will be the one that becomes stronger. If we feed the flesh and do the things of that of the world, then the flesh will grow stronger and dominate the spirit. But if we study the word of God, cry out to God, uh, plead with him for strength, the Holy Spirit, the spirit, spiritual part of our experience will grow and dominate the flesh and so the flesh will no longer dominate but the spirit will dominate so therefore Christ, paul is telling the galatians that they need to walk in the spirit live in the spirit at all times and they will have victory if they do did that amen amen that's 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 a powerful thing to know that we have the choice we are the makers of our own uh 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 future mm -hmm. God indeed influence what happens but we take the choices you know god can give you a full scholarship to somewhere but you can choose to go somewhere else yes we are the ones who take the choice whether to ultimately hold the world the hand of the world or the hand of god and please don't misunderstand us we are not saying that all the people out there or everything is going to be uh, uh, evil outside of your own door. But what, mm -hmm. what we mean by the world is, as we said, the lust of the flesh and the things that uh, sin, uh, uh, that attract sin, basically, all the sinful things that happen. So now continuing this, Pastor, when we have the, 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 the when we choose right and mm -hmm. we choose to have the spirit of God with us, and we choose for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to talk to us, to, to nudge us as we go along. What are some of the attributes that the Holy Spirit is living with us? Well, uh, let's look at Galatians 5, 22 to 25. Because we look first at the things of the world, you know, adultery, uh, fornication, uh, all those things. Now, the things of the flesh. Now we're going to look at the things of the spirit. And we're going to see the, the difference between the two. Well, the fruit of the spirit. So he, he spoke about the lust of the flesh. Now he's talking about the fruit of the spirit. If we go after the flesh, all of those things we spoke of, those are things that will manifest themselves. If we go after the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love. We'll exhibit love. We'll exhibit joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 
Uh, that means that if we rise to the occasion as the spirit guides us, we don't have to worry about the law because we are living within the guidelines and framework of the law. And they that are, are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and with, with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us therefore walk in the spirit. So if we, uh, if we give ourselves to Christ, then just as Christ was crucified on the cross and died for us, when we give our lives to Christ as well, we too have to die. The old man has to die. And if that old man dies, then we allow Christ to infill us and give us that new life. And so if we live in the spirit, we then have to walk daily in the spirit. Not only daily, as a matter of fact, we have to walk moment by moment in the spirit. Yes. You know, one of the things that I like for here is that what God wants us to do essentially is going to be better than what the world offers, you know? That's correct. I remember, I remember the testimony of a, of, a, of a woman who was saying, I don't want my child to be raised in a church. I don't want my child, and, and, he was having, and she was having a, t uh, a talk with a pastor. I don't want my child, I don't want my family in, in a church. I don't want them to grow to be slaves to, to a book. <laughs> and the pastor was very smart. And he said, okay, now I'm going to go out of your door. But before I go out to the door, I want you to look at the window, out of the window. They lived in a, in a bad neighborhood. And she said, and he said, you don't want your, chi your kid to grow, not in a church and not by a book, but you don't want him to live by Jesus. In other words, look outside. You see that young man outside? He has a gun. You see those two people over there? They're doing drugs. You see that lady that is outside? She is waiting for someone to pick her up. So you don't want your son to live like Jesus. You want your son to, to live by the world. So you want him out here. You want him to drink. You want him to smoke. You want him to grow up like the world. It is up to you. You know, the, 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 The mother was very, very, very concerned with those words. And she understood that God in reality does not want us to be, he does not want us to, to, to sound like slaves or some people that are boring, but he wants to protect us from a world of disaster, a world that potentially end our lives prematurely because of the poor choices that we make. You know, I, I remember always the sign, the sign of, of this man. He, he, he lived right across my school and he had a sign outside of his door that said, if you drink, don't drive. Because when you drive, you can have an accident. And on the, world, on the bottom, it's had a little sign seeing that he's the one that said it. And he said, a homeless man meaning that a drunk driver had gone into his house, smashed into his house, and destroyed half of his house. You know, he, he, the man, by God's grace, he was alive. He, he was good. But the drunk driver passed away. You know, when we live by the world, maybe we're not, maybe you say, oh, I'm not going to become a drug lord. Oh, I'm not going to do this. Oh, I'm not going to do that. But Satan wants to destroy you. That is the thing that we need to understand. Satan wants to destroy you. And God wants to have you safe and sound with better health than ever. So when, you co when, when he comes, we're able to stand firm and go to the kingdom. Pastor, any comments now? Yes, you're, you're absolutely right there. And it breaks my heart every time when I see uh, sometimes parents making the wrong choices and their kids are falling after those wrong choices even though sometimes they should know better, you know, 
but God is so merciful that he gives us chance after chance after chance. And so we're just putting the, the differences out there. Following after the flesh leads to pain and death and strife and discord. Following after the spirit leads to harmony, love, peace, joy, goodness, and grace, and harmony, temperance. And so the, the choices are right there. They're very evident. And I pray that we will make the best choice, and that is to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, just one line that I want to read from the notes here that we have is not that God gives rules. He gives principles. Mm -hmm. And those principles apply today and tomorrow. And they apply here and in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in South America, in North America, and even in Antarctica, you know, because a principle that God gives is a principle to love your brother. Now, Pastor, we're going to go into the five basic principles for Christian living. And uh, as we go through them, how can these principles help us to have a better life? And like Jesus says, a life that is more abundant. And it's good that we say they're principles. They're not, you do this or else I'm going to get you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> they are principles to live by, to make us have that life and life more abundant experience that God wants us to have. That's why he has given us these principles to follow. And so it is now up to us whether we're going to follow them or not. So I just pray that as we go through them, you'll think about them, uh, pray about them, and ask God to motivate you to and uh, motivate us to follow them. Amen. The first basic principle that a Christian should have is motivation. Why are we doing this? For whom am I doing this? And to who am I giving the glory or the attention too. Pastor, why should a, a Christian have a good motivation? It is very important to have a, a good motive because I can have the motive that I want to do it just to glorify myself. I want people to see me or to glorify my wife or my kids, or is it to glorify God? Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For the love of Christ constraineth us, the love of Christ the love of Christ constrains me to do the right thing. That's what it's saying. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. That means when we uh, fall in love with what Jesus has done, he died for me. He died for you. Uh, I am now motivated to do everything, not for myself, not to glorify me, not to glorify my empire, but to glorify Christ, to, to point everybody to Christ. Because Jesus himself said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So Amen. everything that I do, I'm lifting up Christ so that he can draw men to himself. And we all can have that experience of that more abundant life. Amen. Amen. Now, the second uh, principle, I'm sorry, I, I lost the word, but the second principle that a Christian should have is the principle of having good relationships. Mm -hmm. I want to insert the word here, having loving relationships. Yes. Different type of love, you know, there's the yes. love that you have for your neighbor, there's the love you have for your children, there's the love that you have for your parents, there's the love... Mm -hmm. For your spouses and also for your spouse i'm sorry is because in in spanish in spanish the the translation adds an s because it's male or female depending yeah. your spouse i'm sorry but also a loving relationship with the people that you don't know it says you put others and their needs above yours pastor why is it so good that i have a principle for me to love my neighbor and love the people that I don't know. Yeah. First Corinthians 10, 24. First Corinthians 10 and verse 24. Yeah, even the 10. 
I, I muted you. I'm sorry, my mistake. All right. Are you there? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Where's, where's sorry, technical difficulties. Let me see. Okay, I got it. I've got it. So sorry, you were saying, Pastor. Uh, loving relationships. Loving relationships. Yes, uh, the Ten Commandments were the first four points us to love to God. The last six points us to love love each other. You know, if we love each other, we won't kill, we won't steal, we won't envy. If we love God, we will love each other. And so that's where relationships come in. You know, if we, we have to have a good vertical relationship with God, and then that will reflect itself in our horizontal relationship with, our, with each other. And so let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 24. The Bible reads, let no man seek his own, but every man another's well. <laughs> and that is not what we see in our society today. Every man is after his own. <laughs> striving yeah. for his own but here Paul is telling the Corinthians that let every man strives after another man's will that means help to build up somebody else rather than yes. building himself up you know and, and that's a key statement because if if we're blessed by God uh, then that blessing should overflow from us to others and as we help to build others up God is still blessing us and we are still we're just that conduit so to speak, as we try to lift each other up. Yes. You know, another Christian principle that we should have is priorities. What is important and in yes. what order are you doing things? What is more important, the outward or the inward? Do we spend our time on the outward adornment or in the inward cultivating a, god, a godly spirit pastor why is it so important to know how to prioritize it, it's absolutely important because if if i am okay i don't put god as number one and i just feel okay today i'm going to put uh, my outward adornment as number one tomorrow i'm going to put my education as number one the next day i'm going to put something else no we should be consistent and with the next one is coming but priorities should be consistently consistent yes you know uh, and let's look at first timothy 2 uh, 8 to 10. first timothy 2 8 to 10. all right there you go i will therefore that men pray everywhere Paul is encouraging us to pray and ask God for strength, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. When we pray, we should be confident. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. And I would say men as well in our society. Both mm. men and women adorn themselves in modest apparel. God wants us to be modest in everything that we do with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And the reason Paul, many people have a problem with this text. And the reason Paul wrote this text is because in Paul's day, the women that um, braided their hair, that had a lot of gold and stuff in their hair, were the women who were the prostitutes. prostitutes yeah you know and so if you carry yourself that way then you're going to show to the world something else even though maybe you may not but the perception of who you are will be wrong you know and so paul wants us to have have no doubt as to who we are he doesn't he doesn't want the world to have any doubt about who we are and so he wants us to be temperate in all things to carry ourselves um, with simplicity and but we carry ourselves well, but with simplicity and not to show. And that's why it talks about priorities here. 
What is my prior priority? Do I want when I go to church, everyone to look at my dress or my, my suit or whatever I'm, I'm wearing? No, I'm going to church to worship God. But because I'm going in the presence of God, I dress appropriately, carry myself clean. I carry myself the best that I have because I'm going to see the King of Kings. Amen. It's not about the dress so that others can see the dress. It's because of whom I'm going to visit. I'm Amen. going to visit God. If we are going to visit the president, I'm sure we're going to dress properly. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to carry ourselves properly. Uh, everybody that I see that visits the White House, they dress properly when they go. It's the same thing. We, we're just dressing to show that we honor God and we re recognize his, his authority and his power. But as I said earlier, uh, sometimes we dress to say, look at what I'm wearing today. And uh, that's not what God wants us to do. Yes, yes, definitely. The next point and on the area of Christian principles that we should have. As a musician, I can tell you this is very, very important. It is called consistency, consistency, consistency. You know, I'm a violinist. And I remember when we used to, uh, when I used to play with the Southwestern uh, Symphony, and uh, well, I, actually, I'm a, I'm a violist. It's just that people don't know what a viola is, so I just say I'm a violinist. But uh, when we used to practice, teacher always told us, it's okay if you only practice 20 minutes a day, but make sure that you practice every day. Make sure that you do it every day. That way it is fresh in your mind. It is fresh in your fingers. Your muscle memory is there. And that way you are able to perform your best. Consistency is what is going to get us from one place to, to the other. other. Are we consistent in our behavior? Are we dependable to others? we say one thing and do another pastor what does why does consistency is important to, to christians i can see it from a musician's uh, point of view i can probably see it from a business point of view but why is it yes why is it from a from christian a spiritual point of, view? point of view uh we do not want to be a man of god tomorrow a man of the world the next day a man of god the next day a man of the world the next day, then our influence, our sphere of influence will be tarnished. I've heard so many stories of individuals who were not consistent in their walk and they have made a bad impression of who Christ is. I remember mm -hmm. when we started, we stated that when we give our lives to Christ, we become ambassadors for Christ. That means we are showing the world who Christ is. To my speech, to my language, to my words, I'm showing my kids who Christ is. I'm showing my wife who Christ is. I'm showing my husband. I'm showing my neighbor, my co-worker. You know, I, I have to be consistent because Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, he that endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Endures to the end. And so we have to live consistent lives so that we can endure to the end. Let's look at Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 3. The Bible reads, Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not you after their works, for they say, and do not do. In other words, do as they say, but don't do as they do because do. people that, oh, yes, I do this, I do this, I do this. But when you see them on the street, they're a totally different person. Yes. It's, uh, it's, are, that's, that's, not a great that's not a great testimony, Pastor. That's just uh, mm -hmm. a wrong testimony of who Christ is. You know, Pharisees are telling the people, put all these laws in place what they're telling the people to do, but in the dark, they're doing something totally different. And so what a testimony that is. It's a bad testimony. Mm -hmm. so by God's grace, we will live about that and reflect a good testimony at all times. Amen. The last 
uh, Christian principle that we want to cover today. And there's many more, you know, there's many more uh, uh, traits of, of behavior and subcategories, but today we just want to cover these five basic principles. The last principle that a Christian should have is simplicity. Being simple. The Bible, uh, the Bible reads in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. The Bible reads in Luke chapter 12, uh, verse 15. And I'm going to, I'm going to let this one to you, but I, I, I had something to say there, Pastor, but uh, I cannot say without this verse. Could you All please right, go ahead and read and you can say. Go ahead. All right. The Bible reads, and he said unto them, take heed and be aware of con covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. You know, being simple is always better. I've, I've always said, you know, it, make it plain, simple, short, and sweet. Make it nice. And because you always get to the point, not only in, in the way that we act, you know, but why sometimes we do, we overcomplicate things to the point that they can even come across as wrong. My mom always taught me when I was younger, don't ever do things that are right that may look wrong. Because we try to complicate things when things are just so simple, you know? Things are just so simple and uh, you don't want to give a wrong impression. So just do simple things, simple actions, simple words. And of course the Bible here is telling us about uh, as well the the, the physical uh, simplicity, Pastor. Why is it? Why is, should we strive to be uh, of simple uh, uh, material, materialist? Yeah, as we just read the text, you know, um, as a man's life it does not consist of the abundance of what he owns. It's not about what I own. You know, many people have a lot of things. There's, you know, there there are many Christians who own a lot. But they learn to to uh, manage what they earn and 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 have, so that it does not become the the ruler in their lives. It's the simplicity of of heart, the simplicity of our daily living, the simplicity of how we carry ourselves, so that uh, because as we look out there, there are many people who are in need. Even in our society right now, there are many people who are in need, and sometimes we waste. We waste, we waste. In America, uh, they say we waste 500, each person wastes 500 pounds of food each year. You go to the restaurant and you see people just, they take a bite and they throw the rest out. You know, uh, they, they wear a dress today and they throw it out. That's one time they're wearing, you know, and there are so many people out there who are suffering. Simplicity of life. Jesus would lead a very simple life. There was never one who was a, more simple as Jesus was. And he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so if we have the mind of Christ, then our attitude, our lives will reflect the simplicity of Christ and will draw men. You know, Christianity, we have, many have made it very complex, but it's very simple. It's all about the love of Christ. It's all about what Christ has done for us. And when we recognize what Christ has done for us, when we recognize the awesome sacrifice that he has made for us, we're willing to walk in the same steps as he walked. And by God's grace, as we have gone through these principles and as we have looked at uh, how we can grow up in Christ, so to speak, may we hold on to some of these, all of these principles. And by God's Amen. grace, uh, we will be consistent in our walk. We won't be falling down too much but we will if we fall we won't stay there we'll get up and be motivated to uh shine as jesus wants us to shine yes you know pastor as to this we've been talking about the christian principles of living and how we are to behave and how we are to go out and and you know we, we've been talking and saying it's not that god wants to give us something as you said don't do this but God is trying to recommend us to have a better life. And God is mm -hmm. the one that is responsible. You know, he, 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 he will always be with us every step of the way. Amen. And he has not asked us to do something that he is not willing to do as well. 
So God is will be with you every step of the way as we are trying to live a better life for his honor and glory. As well, we need to realize that the only thing hindering us from making that step is us. You know, I remember when my little sibling was learning, my little siblings were learning how to walk. We would use to hold them by the two hands, you know, and they're there standing and you want to walk with them. But the ones that have to take the steps was the baby. If I took the step, I would drag them, you know, but I don't want to drag them. I want them to walk. So the only thing that is hindering us from walking while God is holding us is for us to take the first step. Pastor, do you have any closing comments for us today? Yes, um, you know, as, as we have looked at um, this study tonight, it is the work of God to bring us to the point of obtaining to the standard that he gives. God has given us a standard of living, his character, his standard is his character but he said i know you are way down there and my character is up here but i'm going to bridge the gap i'm going to be that bridge and i'm going to as just as you said i'm going to hold your hand as he said in, uh, in the book of jeremiah um, i'm going to isaiah i'm going to hold your hand and i'm going to help you step by step he that has begun a good work in you will complete it He's not going to start something in you and leave you alone. He will not leave you nor forsake you, but he will give you every resource that you need to be successful. Just remember that. If you want to be successful in Christ, you will be successful because he said, I'm leaving the comforter who will guide you into all truth. And so he has left us the Holy Spirit. That's the prayer that God will always answer when we pray for the Holy Spirit in our lives. We do not want to be led by the flesh. We want to be led by the Spirit. So pray God that he will send us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all tr truth and to transform our minds so that we can be men and women of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for those words, Pastor. Pastor, as we are uh, closing tonight's study, I, I want to ask you to pray for all of the people who are still taking about, thinking about these steps. You know, they're not easy steps. Uh, many of us were raised with different customs, with uh, different uh, lifestyles, and many of us have grown for years listening to what he wants. But God wants to help us every step of the way to start listening now to his spirit and not... Mm -hmm or the world wants. Could you please pray for us at this time? Right, so let's bar together and pray. Mighty God, eternal Father, you want to do a great work in our lives. So many times, so many things get in the way. Today, the lust of the eyes, things that we see and we yearn for, the lust of the flesh, things that the body yearns for that we know that we should not have the pride of life, the things that will show us up and not you. Oh God, I pray that you will take those things from us. Uh, overpower the flesh with this spirit. You have promised to give us the Holy Spirit. We pray for an abundance of the Holy Spirit on every heart that will hear this message today. That we will rise up as men and women filled with the spirit Ready, ready to be transformed by you, the might of your power. And we will not, Lord, have a form of godliness and deny the power, but we will have the power because the power comes from the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. And so as we have the power, it will be reflected in our speech. It will be reflected in our attitudes. It will be reflected in how we carry ourselves, how we dress, what we eat where we go, where we do not go, how we respond to others, how we uh, live each day, how we do our work in our workplace, how we respond to our neighbor and our friend, our wife and our husband. Oh Lord, bless us in a very mighty way. Forgive us of our sins and whatever there may be that will be holding us back from making that decision to walk with you. Remove those obstacles, O oh Lord. 
tear down those strongholds, break those chains, and give us freedom, freedom in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for helping us with our uh, subject in Christian living. Pastor, what do we have next week? Let me check. Let me check. I, I did not look at the... The meaning, the meaning of, of... Is it that one? Yes. That, that's the one that I have here. The meaning okay. of baptism. Will we All cover right. that one next week? Yes, that's it next week. Meaning of baptism. All right. So by meaning God's grace. Baptism. And that's a very, very important topic. Because uh, once we have been exposed to the word of God, uh, he wants us to make some decisions for him. And so we will look at that next week. What does baptism mean? Amen. So thank you, everybody, for joining us in tonight's study. May God bless you. We're praying for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure that you put them there or in our comments or send us a message here to the patient. Amen. And we'll see All you right. next time. God bless time. you. See you next time.